the fifth painting by Giotto that we have here in our chapel of St. Kateri Take It With a Friary is Francis Before the Sultan. So he's gotten approval from the, of the rule, and we fast forward in time and history with this next painting where many men are following Francis. Saint, thousands of men are going and evangelizing throughout Europe, uh, beginning to proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ and this life of poverty in imitation of the poverty of Jesus Christ. Francis himself ends up going on a missionary journey uh, with one of the crusades down to Egypt. And while they're in Egypt, uh, he just walks right across the battle lines, right into the Sultan's camp and says, I'd like to speak with the Sultan. And miraculously, the army you know, allows him through and allows him to go and meet with the Sultan. And he and the Sultan begin to speak on a daily basis. The Sultan is fascinated by this, this holy man, uh, this man, St. Francis. And after a number of days of conversation, finally St. Francis says, okay, we've, we've talked enough, I've talked enough about Jesus. Um, let's have a trial by fire. I want you to build a big fire and I want you, you, you and, and your holy men and I all to walk through the fire. And if your God's the true God, your holy men will walk through and they'll be unharmed. But if my God's the true God, then I'll walk through the fire unharmed. And uh, the Sultan's like, well, I don't think my holy men will do that. And so Francis says, well, then I'll just do it myself. If he builds a big fire, um, I'll walk through that fire. But you have to promise me if I come out unharmed, you'll become a Christian. And the Sultan's like, no, I, I, I'm not, I can't do that for the you know, sake of my people. I, I can't make that the decision. And, uh, and so they, there's no trial by fire, but Francis is willing to walk through the fire for the sake of the Sultan's soul, for the sake of his conversion. That's how convicted he is um, with his love of Jesus. We have this painting in our chapel because of our call to evangelization. And God has asked us to be willing to walk through the fire for the sake of others, um, to be willing to walk through the fire for the sake of souls. And so we ask for the intercession of St. Francis for that same apostolic zeal, that same desire to go out and to evangelize, the same desire to walk through the fire for the sake of the souls of the people of God. The sixth painting from Giotto that we have in our chapel here at St. Kateri, take it with a friary, is the major scene at Greccio. So we are three years before St. Francis' death. Um, we're getting near the end of his uh, public ministry. Um, and St. Francis had this great devotion to the infant child, Jesus. Um, it, said, it is said that there are two things he meditated upon constantly at the end of his life. One was the great humility of the incarnation, the humility that God would leave heaven and come down to earth, and the great charity of the passion, um, that God would love us so much that he would die for our sakes. Well, he had this great devotion to the infant child, Jesus, and if you ever wondered why you have a major scene in your church, it's because of St. Francis. Here in Greccio, three years before his death, St. Francis actually builds a live manger scene at the church for the Christmas Eve Mass. So during the Christmas Eve Mass, they have animals, they have hay, um, and St. Francis is a deacon, and he is preaching the Mass, and during his preaching, the child Jesus actually appears in the crib that Francis has made. And Francis goes down and he picks him up and holds the child Jesus during the sermon and puts him down, and it's actually said that the hay was used and fed to animals and they recovered and was put on the wombs of mothers who were having difficulties um, in their childbearing and they had a, uh, a smooth birth. Um, all these miracles that happened from the hay um, which St. Francis picked up the infant child Jesus. The reason we have this uh, image in our chapel is again this reminder of the great humility of the incarnation. The constant reminder of the infant child Jesus. We often think about the crucifixion of Jesus which is so important but we also need to remember that our God who is the creator of the universe became a child. And, and entered into the, the humility of having to be cared for by Joseph and Mary. And God has asked us to have that same humility in regards to him. That he wants to care for us um, as Joseph and Mary carry, cared for him as an infant. And we ask for that same humility, that same uh, desire to give ourselves entirely over to God as St. Francis did. The seventh painting of Giotto that we have here in our chapel at St. Kateri Take with the Friary is the stigmata of St. Francis, arguably the most famous scene of his life. So St. Francis, this is two years before he dies, um, he's spending a lot of time in quiet and contemplation and hermitage. Um, the order has grown significantly. Um, he has stepped back from being the, the general minister. Um, he disagrees in many ways in the direction the community is going. They're beginning to institutionalize, beginning to own houses, um, and he's, he's kind of seeing that this thing that he built uh, is, is going in a direction where the Holy Spirit's leading it, but it's really hard for him. It's hard to, the individual charism he is given is now becoming uh, a, a worldwide charism. And so he's spending a lot of time in quiet and, and prayer and contemplating the crucifixion. He's recognizing his own crucifixion that, um, that, that is happening in his life as the order continues to grow and begins, continues to conform with the, the will of the church. And, and that's really hard for him. 
And he's up praying, meditating upon the passion of Christ. Again, he always meditated upon the humility of the incarnation and the charity of the passion. And, and during this time of meditation, a seraph angel appears um, with six wings and it's got a, it sees a wounded figure. And from the wounds uh, that are in his hands, his feet and his side um, of the seraph, the, there's an impression that happens upon St. Francis um, and he's in ecstasy. And he goes into this ecstatic state, he comes out of it and he sees that there's wounds. The wounds of Christ, the wounds of the Passion on his hands, his feet and his side, the wounds of the Sigmata. It is said that the people could actually see the nails that were in his hands and in his feet. Um, and he actually lives in pain the rest of his life because of, because of this. He uh, has a lot of health issues um, due to this and, and some other factors in his life. The reason we have this painting in our chapel is again this reminder of our call to constantly meditate upon the Passion of Christ. That he, he is filled with so much charity that he willingly dies for us. And we willingly must, willingly must die to ourselves, but also willingly take up our cross every day and follow him. Tiwar uh, charism is a metanoia, conversion, ongoing conversion. Take up your cross daily and follow Christ. It's a reminder that Francis, the first stigmatist, the saint, um, con conformed himself to the crucified. And we as Franciscans are called to conform ourselves to the crucified, are called to take up our cross every day and follow Jesus. The eighth and final painting um, from Giotto's uh, paintings in April Basilica in Assisi that we have here in our chapel of St. Kateri Tegu the Friary is the showing of the body of St. Francis to St. Clair after his death. So St. Francis has died. He actually died um, laying just outside of the Porziancola Chapel in the lower part of Assisi. Um, he looked upon Assisi. He blessed it. Um, they had him, he had him, the body brothers lay him naked on the ground while they read the, from the Gospel of St. John, and he dies. Um, after his death, they process his body up um, to Assisi itself, but they pass by the church of San, uh, San Damiano, uh, where he had had the vision um, from the Sundown of Cross that spoke to him. And that's where St. Clair and the poor Clairs are living. Um, that's a whole separate story about St. Clair, this noble woman who ends up following St. Francis and ends up founding the poor Clairs. Um, but they take his body before uh, St. Clair, before the convent, um, who so dearly loved him. And uh, there's uh, great emotion, great sorrow, great mourning at, at the death of St. Francis, this saint who has passed, this holy man who this inspiration who is gone. Um, and the reason we have this um, in our friary is because um, we have to contemplate our death. Uh, memento mori, as, as uh, Carthusians say, remember your death, that one day we will die, that one day we will pass from this life to the next, and um, we will go to be with the Lord. But we must be prepared for that day. We must be prepared for the day when um, God will meet us face to face. And it's a constant reminder to us um, of the joy of that day. That though there's sorrow on the earth, and we see the great sorrow of St. Clair, um, and the loss emotionally um, when people die, there's great joy because um, God is drawing our souls up to him. And as we have lived for him on this life, in this life, he will draw us up to be with him for all eternity. So we constantly remember, remember and meditate on the fact that life is short, life is temporary, um, but uh, it, life everlasting, life eternal, is eternal in heaven. And so let our hearts be pointed to things that matter, things that truly matter, um, the life of heaven, the life of contemplation, the life of intimacy with God.